Hey, Cleaning Nation, welcome. This is our July 3rd. Um, so day before, happy 4th of July, everyone that's listening to it live. And if you're listening to the recording, hope you had a great 4th. Um, yeah, so as once a week, I jump on with Lindsay. We answer questions from you guys, Cleaning Nation. If you have a question, support or go my cleaning company.com. Join the Facebook group. We're there for you. Lindsay, what's the theme? What's the question? How can I help? All right. We had a great theme for this week. I might be biased, but because <laughs> I make them up. <laughs> um, what are your specific questions around hiring? So we had a hiring question last week and we're like, let's roll into this week. I opened it up to everyone on email on the Facebook group and comments and questions came pouring in. So I'm excited. All right. We got a long one, Mike. You ready for this one? I, how could I possibly know and tell you that? You ask it and then I'll tell you if I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So Rachel from Lemur Cleaning, um, group interviews. She does not know how to conduct them. And then she has a ton of questions that... I think, Mike, if you gave us like a general overview of what a group interview looks like and why we suggest doing them, I think that might answer all of her questions. And then I can follow up and uh, hit her questions if they didn't get answered. All right. I'll give a general, yeah, why and how, and then whatever I miss that uh, Rachel needs, you can uh, you can hit me with. So the big re so most of you guys hiring funnel, some version of putting out an ad, um, generally you'll get a bunch of applicants, but if we're honest, you might get 73 applicants and you'll call somewhere between 14 and 26, depending on how <laughs> big headed you are. It's like herding cats. You hate it. So you throw the rest in the garbage of the 22 you call, maybe a book, seven and a half interviews, three or four of them show up. They kind of stink. You don't know. Maybe you're a little desperate. You make a bad call. They no call, no, whatever. It, just, it stinks, right? And it's so exhausting and frustrating as soon as you feel staffed and staff doesn't mean fully staffed. It means like if nobody breathes or moves or sneezes, I won't have to clean. You just stop that hiring funnel immediately. Even if you're like, this guy's not great, but he's here. Like we just stop the hiring funnel way too, because it's so painful. Right? So the way, the big thing about the group interview is we want to make it not painful where a it can happen all the time with or without you, right? The way we coach is your cleaners are actually going to be running these group interviews so they can get better at, they can improve their skill sets. You can show them that there's a lot of people that want this job. Um, and you, the big thing we teach is three different interviews and three different places with three different people. So it's a group interview, one-on-one -on -one interview, working interview, but we'll focus on the group interview for Rachel. So the big benefit is all that rigmarole we do with the 70 applications and you look at the resumes and some stink and some don't, and then you call and that guy doesn't pick up, but the other guy does. And then this guy sounds good, but he shows up and he's terrible. And this guy sounds terrible. I mean, like it's just exhausting. Right. So we set up a situation where you just have an automated system. Tell everybody, don't even look at the like it says I'm a drug dealer and I hate life and I don't have a car and I'm in jail currently. He gets the exact same automated, yeah, come on down, let's go, as everyone else does. Cause here's the deal. Typically, the show rate we're looking for is 10%. Some people get 20 or 30, but that means 90% don't show. So maybe I look at Lindsay's resume and it's amazing. She's just the best human ever. And boy, I would be so lucky to have her. But I tell <laughs> those of you who can't see the video, Lindsay's very excited about her, her recommendation of how amazing her resume is. Um, so, but then she doesn't show up at the interview. So it doesn't matter how, sorry, girlfriend, doesn't matter. Like, cause here's the job, go to places with cleaning, with supplies that I send you with and clean them. And the first thing we ask them to do is come to a place. And they're not able to do that. Well, they've just disqualified themselves, right? So maybe someone else's evil Lindsay, or no, good Lindsay, <laughs> her application ain't great. Maybe English isn't her first language. Maybe she's not computer literate and putting together an application is difficult, or not an application, a resume is not, you know, maybe she's a mom that just hasn't worked in a while. But she shows up, she's dressed right. She looks me right in the eye. She shakes my hand. She's there five minutes early. She's super sweet and kind to everybody else. She seems like an amazing human being. I'm there. It costs me no time, right? So we move from this painful, tedious thing that we hate. That's not even very effective, right? Because maybe Lindsay's great. I just miss her on the phone. So we'd send automated invites to everybody. And if you get 50 or 100 applicants, you get five or 10 people. And whoever shows up, they've already distinguished themselves regardless of the 
resume or their caliber. Like I can see Lindsay, right? The way she looks at me or doesn't, the way she interacts with everyone else, when she shows up, how she dresses, how she shakes my hand, how she speaks. Like I get a lot of information in four and a half minutes <clears throat> that I can never get on the phone or um, just reading a resume. So the beautiful thing is when it's the same place, the same time every week, <laughs> we usually talk about having it at a coffee shop. So worse comes to worse. You get a nice little break, ideally with the cleaner who you're training, and you get to conversate with them and have a little coffee and sugar. You get a little break that you weren't expecting. Best case scenario, you get three, four, five, ten people, and the cleaner's like, holy crap, a lot of people want this job. Each other are going, holy crap, a lot of people want this job. And when you get the six people in and three stink immediately, it doesn't cost you any extra time. It's no stress whatsoever. So hopefully that answers the question on the why. I'll give you a little bit of how, and then you can let me fill in any blanks I've missed, Lindsay. On the how, a couple things. One, people get uptight about, oh my gosh, I got 67 people you know, applied that want to come. Again, you're only going to get 10%, so that'd be 6.7. Say, what if 20 people come? It would be phenomenal. Could you imagine what kind of interview you've ever been for a, a lower wage cleaning job where 20 people showed up? It would be phenomenal, right? So you, people get afraid, and it's, it's never going to happen. But say it did, it would just be fine, okay? The number we're looking for is... I mean, we'll take one, right? One to, if you're consistently getting 10, I'm going to have more interviews or less ad spend, depending on how much people you need to hire. So that one to 10, sweet spots, probably four to six, seven is ideal, but you can have extra. It's not going to hurt. You could have, um, if you just have one person, don't be like, oh, I'm just going to use that as a group interview and the one-on-one, because -on -one, it's not about the one-on-one. -on -one. It's about three different people in three different places at three different times. So it's still going to be that. Um, so Ideal amount of people, probably like, again, that four to six. The, how do you conduct it? The big mistake people make is they talk about themselves and their job and they want to sell, sell, sell how great they are. It's not what this is for because when you're talking, you're not learning. And when they're talking, you're learning. Um, what you're going to do is just ask some questions, core values-based questions. Can't get into the core values. Maybe do a thing on core values or culture next time, but I'm not going to do that today. So ask some questions of things that would really come up and then filter it through their your core values. So I might ask Lindsay, if your partner didn't show up in a day, what would you do? And our core values are have fun, make money, be real, and help out. So she gave an answer that was indicative of a person who defaulted to having fun, making money, being real, and helping out. She's a fit. If she gives an answer that's not that, I know she's not a fit. Um, typically, I'm going to ask everybody at least one question just because they're there. And the people that I like, I might ask two or three questions. And when I'm done, I'm just going to go, hey, everybody. Thanks for coming. If we think it makes sense to move forward in the process, we'll reach out to you. Um, if not, best of luck. Really appreciate getting to know all y'all. Hey, Lindsay, would you hang back for a minute? Or Lindsay and Steve, would you hang back for a minute? When they hang back, I'm going to book there. The people that I want to have a second interview with, I'm going to book those after everyone's left. So I'm not being like, you're in, you're out <laughs> kind of a thing. All right. What did I miss for Rachel? Or do you think I got what she needed? I think you got it because uh, she, in her question, she went into the nitty gritty of like, do you ask each person a different question? Uh, so they don't copy each other. <laughs> yes, uh, I don't want mm -hmm. to give, because if I ask five people the same question, well, the fifth guy's answer is going to be way better than the first guy because you get to hear four answers and think about it for five minutes. So yeah, I'm yeah. definitely going to kind of mix up the questions. Yeah, Rachel made a comment in her litany of questions here that she says that she feels like everyone lies on the interview. But I think, Mike, correct me if I'm wrong, if you're asking core-based values questions, core value-based questions, I think it's going to be easy to catch people in like a lie or them being truthful on the spot, un untruthful. What do you think about that? Yeah, there's a lot of things that are going to help you. One, yeah, they don't know the answer. So right. a lot of times people go, we are, one of our core values is making money. Tell me about how you like making money. Well, of course, they're going to give you a bull crap answer. Right. But if I just say, <clears throat> what are you going to do when your partner doesn't show up? Like, they could go, I would be amazing and whatever. And they're lying. and like, I would really leave. It's like, well, you, know, you think I'm not going to find out as soon as the guy shows up, right? You know, so it just, because they don't know what the answer is supposed to be, they're a little more likely to be real. And the beautiful thing is with a group interview, a one-on-one -on -one interview and a working interview and the working interview can be like a week. Um, you're going to get the key. They might be able to lie once or twice, but it's really hard for someone to lie three and four times. And you'll, you'll kind of figure it out if that makes sense. And Again, because we're looking for, if I'm just looking for quote unquote, a good fit, like before I knew core values, I would have met Lindsay, but like, I really like her, but I don't know why. Like, I think she's going to be great, but I just have a gut feeling. And if I did a good job living my core values, 
which is hard if I haven't articulated. And Lindsay might feel that same way. Like this place seems cool, but I don't know why. But when I can clearly go, is Lindsay, does she seem like a real human being? And that's just for us. Our core values be real. That doesn't have to be everybody. I'm not going to be right a hundred percent of the time, but when I can go, is she real? I can get a lot more concrete answer than do I like her or is she a good fit? Like, I, what do you mean by good fit? What do you mean by like, like, like to have a beer with, like, like to work with, like to go on a mission trip with, like there's lots of different, like, like to make a lot of money for me. Like there's just too many things, but it, did Lindsay seem like a real person? Oh yeah. She seems super real. So just being clear on what you want is going to help you get a clear picture. You're not giving the right answer. And I'm not saying no one will ever sneak through, but the cool thing is because you're going to live your core values throughout the whole process, each of the interviews, the onboarding, whatever, say Lindsay does trick me to come in <clears throat> and she doesn't like having fun. Well, she's just going to leave anyway because we're all having fun at you know monthly parties and we like being together. And she's like, I just want to get paid and leave. Even if she does trick me, she's going to wander off and it's like not a big deal, right? So she's probably not going to, she's going to, she probably won't be able to articulate like, their core value is having fun. And I don't think work is a place for fun and I don't like it here. She's probably just going to have a feeling like, I don't know. And she's probably going to wander off prior to getting hired. Lindsay's laughing and smiling because the Lindsay I'm describing is the anti actual Lindsay. <laughs> no, it's funny. Cause um, you just made like small side tangent, but the way you just described something, I have a family member that's the exact opposite of me and they would not be a good fit for grow my cleaning company. And I feel like you just described them and it just made me laugh. Sorry, okay, family nice. member. And just look how that even works. If Lindsay was referring people as opposed to like, oh, I've got a friend who'd be yeah. great. She'd be like, not that guy for very specific reasons. I know why. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mike Campion here. Do you ever listen to the podcast and go, this is great information. I just wish I could actually get it implemented. And I wish I could get some help. But we do that. If you would like either myself or my team's help actually coming up with a plan that's specialized to you and your business, because with these podcasts, obviously we have to be very general. We can only go 20 minutes at a time. If you'd like to jump on a call with myself, or my team, go to growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. We'll jump on a call. There's no charge and we'll help you get some absolute clarity around exactly what to do next and how to do it. The reason we don't charge for these calls is the plan that we come up with. People want help implementing that. If that's the case, we're happy to talk about it. And if it's not, that's okay too. We're happy to just help you come up with a plan. So if you want to translate the information you're learning here into an actual plan that can change your life, give us a ring, growmycleaningcompany.com forward slash talk. Love to either myself or have one of our coaches walk you through and actually personalize the content you get here to where you're at with your business. Talk soon. Mike, if I may, um, this is in Re if, it's not in Rachel's question, but I see this a lot where our um, cleaning nation will have um, on their uh, on their job ad, they'll have something like must provide their own transportation, right? And when people show up to the group interview, are you, would you recommend checking again for that or just tell them if they make it past the group interview and you invite them to the next one-on-one, -on -one, are you just going to assume they can transport themselves and not like dive into the nitty gritty of, do you know what I mean? Like how much detail do we need to go in on the group interview if they're qualified or not? It's a great question. It's such a good question. I'm going to take it a step further to the application or to the, the not the application, the uh, hiring ad. Okay. So a lot of times we try to over qualify in the hiring ad because we're used to the crappy system of, I got to call a hundred people and do interviews with 20 and it just sucks so bad. We're like, I don't want to go through that. So you get super specific. I wouldn't put any of that stuff as little as I can put all I put on the hiring ad is core values, core values, core values, call to action. Like come here, call here, click here, do whatever I want them to do. Um, and you could put like that. And first of all, make sure you're asking legal questions because in some places it's like, well, you know, I can take the bus and you're not allowed to ask me if I have my own car. So like, obviously make sure you're following the laws. Um, you can put whatever you want in there. People don't read. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm like literally 90% core values, 10%. Like I don't even put it as a clean, like the, the, the heading is going to be, you know, house keeper or janitorial, whatever, but in the body of the ad, we're not really going to talk about cleaning at all or really hours or wages or any of those requirements. So I'm going to put as little as possible in the application because it doesn't cost, they're going to be there. I'm going to be there for an hour, half hour, either way. It doesn't matter if six people show up or two people or 11 people. So it's fine for them to be there. Um, in the group, when am I going to say reliable transportation? Again, make sure you're doing it legal. I'm probably going to do that in the first interview. You know, I'm not saying you can't put it in the ad, but we're just not going to hammer on that, right? Like, okay. especially with when it comes to cleaning people, oh, they've got experience cleaning. Well, I don't know what that means. That just might mean I have to retrain them. Like, it, I'm looking for, you know, I can train for skill and hire for attitude, hire for core values match. So, long story short, 
Yeah, I guess you can put certainly before the the group in or before the one-on-one. So if I held Lindsay and Steve back, I might go, Hey, the reason I want to have you back is for an interview. I just have to make sure before we do, are you legal to work here? Or do you have a drive? Like whatever the, whatever your one or two or three disqualifiers, you just throw them in there. But again, am I going to waste everybody's time disqualifying them when I'm only going to keep zero to one or two of them back anyway? No, let's just handle it the right time. Got it. That answered my question perfectly because yeah, when is the right time to streamline it to ask that kind of question? You just answered it when you hold those people back that you think are qualified. Okay. If it comes up, you can answer like if someone asks, and that's the other thing, people are gonna ask questions about you. The tendency is like, oh my gosh, we're because we love our companies, right? We should, we're the yeah. owner. But you can't do that. Yeah, you can. It's not gonna be effective. You just want to give a short answer. It's like, do we need a car? Yeah, you do. That said, next question is gonna be for Lindsay. Lindsay, tell me about so you can answer, but just quick and easy, moving on. Don't get on a whole diatribe because when you're talking, you're not learning. And the whole goal is to learn about them, not to teach them about you. Got it. Great. Okay. Thanks for entertaining my questions for theoretical Rachel there. <laughs> All right. Next up we have Felicia and she emailed in, Hey Mike, my first question is, well, her second question, sorry, Felicia, it was unrelated to hiring. So we're going to save that for another time, but she wants to know where should she go to have background checks for my workers? Do you have anything you recommend for that, Mike? Again, I hate to be this way because, again, not a lawyer, guys. Don't play one on TV. <laughs> not a lawyer in any stretch of the imagination. That said, I, I'm not a big fan of background checks because, A, you have to make sure that they're legal <laughs> or you handle them legally. So if you get a background check and Lindsay comes up as a criminal, it's like, well, is it a felony? Is it a misdemeanor? Was it five years ago? Was it 20 years ago? Was it like, would, would, you know what I'm saying? Like, so A, you have to make sure you do it legally. B, you may have to make sure you have a system that you follow all the time. And you can't, you have to just be like, sorry, Lindsay, you click this box. And she's like, oh my gosh, it was this or it was that. Or it was like, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, that means I'm too bad. You got to kind of, I don't say dumbly follow it. So I'm not a huge fan of background checks. If I'm commercial and it's required, then obviously I'm going to do that. Or my insurance requires it for some reason I will comply, but I've not. Again, all a background check means is in the province that you're, you know, in the area that you're checking, right? I don't know if they're all federal or not, like, I'm sure none of them are global or very few or you have to spend a ton of money. It's just in the area you're looking in the time frame you're looking, did they do anything? That, and then even that, do you get any details? So it's just like, Lindsay committed a felony. Well, maybe driving 87 in a 45 school zone is a felony. And she, you know, the cop didn't like her and whatever. Okay. Murdering a dude is a felony. Stealing jewelry from a home that they were cleaning in is a felony. Like, well, those are all very different things when I'm considering hiring somebody. And it's like, well, but have they been rehabilitated? Should I never get it? And then we just get into this whole like gray area of like, now I got to be the judge and the jury. I don't want any of it. And there's without even a legal thing. So I'm just, I hate to say it because it sounds odd. I'm not a huge fan of background checks because there's a lot of liability exposure. And I don't know if they give you a ton of, because again, maybe Lindsay, maybe Lindsay's a dirt bag. She hasn't got caught yet, right? Or hasn't shown up my thing. So background check's not going to check for that. And even, and maybe she's a good person that did do something funky that showed up, but I can't, it just is very hard to nuance. So no, I don't have anywhere specific to recommend for background checks. If I was going to do them, uh, I would have a payroll company like ADP. I do it through a larger company. I'd make sure they were like, I would try and off board it, like pass fail as much as possible. Like I don't get any details. I don't get into it. They just come back and go, this guy's eligible for hire. This guy's not. And I'd make sure it was a large company that was super qualified to do that. And I would just handle it that way. Mm, okay. Surprising answer there. I like it. Did not it see rarely do I get to surprise Lindsay. It's a good yeah, answer. I yeah. feel like I'm long, but we've only done two questions. So hit me with another one. I'll try and get a, a little quicker. All right. I'm going to feature a comment from Ariella in the chat live. Um, so you just went through the, in the previous question, the hiring process with the group um, interview one-on-one -on -one, uh, and then the working interview. She said, any tips on quicker hiring process? Currently, it, she's saying it's like a two-step process. Well, it, really, it's three at least, right? Can you walk us through the timeline of how long that usually takes to hire someone with your thought system, Mike? So glad that she asked that. The biggest mistake people make is they want to get out of cleaning now. And we coach people. We don't teach them to get out of cleaning today. We teach them to get out of cleaning forever. So most people have a process they can get out of cleaning, but it lasts a day, a week, a month. Everything's duct taped together and they're stuck back in because someone calls in and blah, 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 blah. So 
the process really only takes a couple of weeks once you get it set up. So we recommend two group interviews a week, um, two one in every time there's, and the, the one-on-ones and the working interviews are triggered by a successful group interview. So if I do a group interview and nobody qualifies for the one-on-one interview, then there are no more, inter- you know, that that's just that. Um, so every time I do a group interview that could trigger a one-on-one and every time I do a one-on-one that could trigger a working. So the group interview you could have on a Tuesday, the one-on-one interview you could have a Wednesday, the, um, working interview could be Thursday, Friday, and they could be fully up and trained. We train them. We, the way we teach is for them to graduate onto like a full staff is they got to train the next guy. So that can take a couple of weeks, but that's why you have a hiring funnel always going the big, and I don't want to judge whoever asked the email, but most of the time that kind of a question of how quick is it is because they want to be like, Oh, when I need someone, I'm going to, I need to hire right away. That's not how we coach. We coach that you're constantly having the funnel running. So you always have the, visual I just kind of made up a couple of days ago or pictured a couple of days ago is people have ponds of employees. We want a stream of employees, right? So they have their little pond and they're always trying to get the right amount of fish in there. You need a stream. So there's a constant supply of new fresh water coming in as opposed to the old water that tends to get stale. So to answer the question, it should only take a couple of weeks to have the hiring funnel, which sounds like forever. But again, when's the best time to buy real estate? 10 years ago. When's the second best time? Now. When's the best time to start a hiring funnel a month ago. When's the second best time now? So short answer is you can onboard, you know, from group interview to ready to go quickest a week, probably longest two or three weeks. But if you have a hiring funnel running all the time, the time doesn't really matter. All right. Got it, Mike. Well, we'll cut it there to, for this week and save some questions for next time. And we'll go into culture. It sounds like also next week. I love like that. It. Well, it depends. If you feel like this was so big and there's so much more, we can do a double of this and then on culture or just culture, I'll leave it up to you. Guys, gals, if you are still cleaning or stuck, not being able to grow because you can't get enough good people, feel free to reach out. Mike at growingcleaningcompany.com. Jump with us in the group. Oh, um, we have, if you, if you follow us on Instagram, we have coaches on Instagram that can help ping them and say, hey, Mike told me how you can help me with hiring. I'm stuck. And uh, they'll, they'll hook you up. Sound good? All right. Appreciate you, Cleaning Nation. Have a happy fourth. Talk soon. Hey, Cleaning Nation, if you dug the content you just got, we don't do any ads and I don't sell anything on this podcast, but if you would just subscribe, rate, and review, it would be huge and I'd be so appreciative. Not only is it going to help me, but you'll help other owners of cleaning companies across the world work less, make more, and get profitable. So if you appreciate the value we give, again, subscribe, rate, and review. It would mean the world to me. I'd really appreciate it. And we sure appreciate your time and attention.